From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. Good morning, St. Margaret's. Thank you for joining us for this first Sunday of Advent. I hope everybody is excited for the for the new liturgical year and and as we begin to worship the coming of our Lord. Uh, let's start off our morning with hymn number 57, Lo, He Comes with Clouds Descending. Claim 
this, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins for our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our King and Savior now draws near. Join with me in saying the Venite on page 82 of the Book of Common Prayer. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. The Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker, for he is our God. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 7, uh, pardon me, Psalm 80, verses 1 through 7 uh, and 16 through 18. It can be found on page 702 of the Book of Common Prayer. Uh, we will pray the psalm uh, together in unison. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. Shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angered despite the prayers of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors, and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand, the son of man you have made so strong for yourself. And so we will never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood, and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you. The works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry, and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all of our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of your iniquity. Yes, O Lord, you are our Father, we are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, 
and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. The word of the Lord. We join with me in saying the second song of Isaiah, our canticle this morning, can be, be found on page 86 of the Book of Common Prayer as well as your bulletin. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall down from the heavens, and return not again but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth, and it will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I have purposed and prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Mark. Jesus said, In those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light. And the stars will be falling from heaven, and the power in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds, with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels, and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey, when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The word of the Lord. Join with me in uh, saying the song of Zechariah, our second canticle this morning. You can find that on page 92 of the Book of Common Prayer as well as printed in your bulletin. We'll say the song of Zechariah together. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet in the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
And I speak to you in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, well, a very good morning to you, uh, St. Margaret's, uh, whether you're joining us in Lawrence or around Kansas or really around the world. It's uh, a joy to be with you. I, I've been anticipating this morning for some time now. I'll, I'll get more into that later. But I, I hope that everyone had a, a very good Thanksgiving holiday. I hope it was safe and blessed and, and a good time wherever you were. I'm sure it was quite different. It was different for a lot of us. Um, it feels like a little bit of a, a turnaround, but here we are. It's already the first of just four Sundays in Advent. Um, as we get, begin our journey this morning through a new liturgical season, a new liturgical year, I'm reminded uh, that one of the most distinctive aspects of Advent is that unlike pretty much the rest of the church calendar, Advent has for a while now been very much out of step with our larger culture. For example, I think most people can get the idea behind Lent. They can understand how as the days get longer and longer and spring just begins to blossom, that, that Lent is an opportunity to engage in a sort of spring cleaning, not of your house, but of your soul. Likewise, I think most people understand on, on perhaps an intuitive level or an unconscious level the idea of, of Easter. They get how God has woven resurrection into the very fabric of our universe. Our universe hints at resurrection. And every spring we gather at Easter to celebrate the fact that it's more real than we might ever imagine. Advent, though, our culture simply has no idea what to do with Advent. I don't know if it's because of the turn towards colder weather or because it's uh, the opposite of spring and the days are, are getting shorter and the nights are getting longer, but it seems as though our culture resists the idea that the month of December should be marked by anything other than revelry and festivities and outward-facing happiness. Many years, it's a struggle to take Advent to heart. Many years, it's a struggle to defy our culture and to take some time to prepare our hearts, not just for the festivities that the month of December brings, but also for the quiet awe and wonder of incarnation. I will say, though, that this year uh, may just end up feeling a little bit different. After all, everything about 2020 has felt different, and this is sure to include Advent. This year, my sense, at least, is that to try to cultivate a sense of preparation and watchfulness and, and hope may end up being both easier and more difficult all at the same time. First, this Advent may be a little difficult because this act of collective waiting that we start this morning, it began long before today. After all, we've kind of been waiting since March, haven't we? We've been waiting for the virus to go away, waiting for a vaccine, waiting for a sense of normalcy to finally return, waiting for a, a full church that gathers together in worship. We've been waiting. Makes you wonder what's so special about a morning like this one. For better or for worse, the waiting is going to continue today. It's going to march on to tomorrow and then into a new year. From a certain perspective, it seems like we've been in a sort of advent for months now. A time of penitence with no end quite in sight. Waiting is never easy. And to enter into a season of waiting after waiting for so long doesn't necessarily make things any easier. That's the more difficult aspect. I think there's a silver lining even in the midst of all that's happening, and it's this. I'm confident that God desires to use this season of Advent 
to do something new and unexpected in us. I say this because at its best, Advent brings with it an intentionality to our waiting. We all wait, after all. In many ways, to be human is to wait. The real question is for what or for whom we are waiting. And for most of us, most of the time, answers to a question like that would be the ordinary things taken from the ordinary stuff of life. Most of the time, we spend our days waiting for different jobs and different relationships, different opportunities. We spend our days waiting for the next vacation, the next holiday, the next party. We wait. We humans wait, but we rarely stop to consider what is it that we're waiting for. We rarely stop to consider the act of waiting. We rarely stop to consider how what we wait for says something important about who we are. And that's the sense in which maybe this year is going to be a little bit different. You see, this year we're waiting on things that are much bigger than ourselves. I mean, we're waiting on realities that will alter the course and the shape of our lives, at least for the foreseeable future. And yet these realities are things that we have precious little control over. This reveals something important about us. It reveals something important about the human condition. Nothing else, 2020 has demonstrated just how vulnerable, how needy the human condition truly is. It's here that I'm reminded uh, of the words of Rowan Williams and his delightful uh, Advent sermon that he gave several years ago. This is what Rowan Williams preached, quote, humans live at some level in the awareness that there are things that we cannot do for ourselves. No human being alone can teach himself or herself language. No human being alone can know himself or herself loved. And the whole human race alone cannot assure itself of its worth or interest, its dignity and lovableness, its responsibility. End quote. It's far too easy to forget this truth. It's far too easy to let the stuff of earth and the illusion of control distract us from the basic reality that we all need, we all long for assurances that we simply, in the end, cannot engineer on our own. It's here that I'm reminded of the words from Isaiah that we heard just a few moments ago. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. Even though righteous deeds, for a moment at least, can glitter, they will eventually be revealed for what they are. While lives, for a moment at least, can possess that elusive feeling of control, they too will eventually become subject to forces that carry them away. This is the human condition, the condition that each of us are born into. And this is what drives so much of our waiting. Such that much deeper than the next opportunity or job or vacation or event, I'm convinced that all of us, every last human being on this planet, all of us are waiting on just two very basic assurances. All of us are spending our lives wanting to know in the end that we can be known as we truly are and that we can be loved without condition. That's what we're waiting for, to be known as we truly are 
and to be loved despite all that without condition. And if there is a virtue to 2020, and I doubt that, but insofar as there is a virtue to 2020, it's, it's this. I think it's revealed this truth to us. Challenges, after all, have a way of reminding us what it is that truly matters, what it is that truly lasts, what it is we're after in this world. It's in light of all this uh, that here we are, the first Sunday of Advent, and I have a very, very simple invitation to extend to you this morning, and I extend it to you as a sort of vision for this season that we will spend together. My invitation is this, sit and wait. Sit and wait during the season of Advent, perhaps in a way that you never have before. Sit and wait with Israel as it waited year after year upon a Messiah, as it waited desperately for God to tear open the heavens and to come down so that the mountains would quake at God's presence. Sit and wait with Israel as it waited year after year on restoration and light and salvation to come from God. Spend some time dwelling, too, upon the future that's described for us in Mark's gospel. A future when Jesus will enter our world once more, not as a helpless baby born in a manger, but as an awesome judge who arrives upon the clouds. And finally, as you sit and as you wait these next four weeks. Spend a few moments and consider what you have waited upon in the past and whether those things that you thought were so important that you just couldn't wait for, think whether those things maybe were covers, perhaps even idols, for the deepest longings of the heart. Think about what it is in this world that it's truly worth waiting for. It's truly worth trusting. I say that word trusting intentionally. I say it because in the end, the act of waiting, it's not simply something that reveals our hearts. In the end, waiting is something that shapes our hearts. To truly wait on something, to long for something, to love something that is already, but not quite yet. That is an act of trust. It's an act of discipleship. In many ways, it's the Christian life boiled down to a sentence. I mean, think about it. We all live in a liminal space. We confess a faith that Christ has died and that Christ is risen, and yet here we are, waiting for Christ to come again. More than anything else, it's that image, the image of a triumphant Messiah that should encourage us, awaken us, enliven us, stir us in the deepest places of our heart. That's what we're waiting for. It's His gaze that we should be seeking My friends, because it's His gaze that alone can meet our most important longings. Grace and truth come from Jesus. It's Jesus who is waiting to tell us that He knows us completely and that He loves us unconditionally. It's Jesus alone who is meant to be our promise and our hope. What are we waiting for? We're waiting for Jesus. It's never easy. Waiting is never easy. Waiting on 2021 is not going to be easy. And yet, by God's grace, we can and we will wait well. By God's grace, we will wait in a way that 
disciples us, changes us, that transforms us. By God's grace, we're waiting on a person, Jesus, who never lets us down, who never forsakes us, and who loves us and who will be with us to the very end. Amen. Will you join with me in affirming our common faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed? You can find that on page 96 of the BCP as well as your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. Lord, keep this nation under your care. Let your way be known upon earth. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Create in us clean hearts, O God. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal. Through him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Come, thou long-expected Jesus, born to set thy people free from our fears and sins release us let us find our rest in thee israel strength and consolation hope of all the earth thou art dear desire of every nation joy of every longing heart born 
want my people to deliver born a child and yet a king born to reign in us forever now thy gracious kingdom bring by thine own eternal spirit rule in all our hearts alone by thine all sufficient merit raise us to thy glorious throne St. Margaret's is praying for the church, the nation, and the world. Pray especially this time for those in our community in need of healing. Earl, Sandy, Peter, Anne, Linda, Kathy, Kim, Rebecca, Dawn, Adriana, Danny, Greg, Gina, Carrie, Cindy, Brad. We pray also for those in our community needing strength and guidance. Mary, Bill, Donna, Janice. We pray for those who have died. Dick Hamler, Alice Weltmer. We also offer a special prayer for our missionary, Corinne, that she stay safe and well. Turning to 101 of the BCP or your bulletin, let's say the general thanksgiving together in unison. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray you give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout the ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Did you feel the mountains tremble? Did you hear the oceans roar? When the people rose to sing of Jesus Christ, the risen one. Yeah. 
Did you feel the people tremble? Did you hear the singers roar? When the lost began to sing of Jesus Christ, the saving one. And we can see that God, you're moving a mighty river through the nations and young and old will turn to jesus cling wide new heavenly gates bear the way of the risen lord open up the doors and let the music play streets resound with singing songs that bring your hope songs that bring your joy dancers who dance upon injustice do you feel the darkness tremble when all the saints join in one song and all the streams flow as one river to wash away our brokenness and we we see that god you're moving a time of jubilee is coming when young and old return to jesus fling wide you heavenly gates Prepare the way of the risen Lord. Open up the doors and let the music play. Let the streets resound with singing. Songs that bring your hope. Songs that who dance upon injustice open up the doors and let the music play let the streets resound with singing songs that bring your hope songs that bring your joy dancers who dance upon the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Well, St. Margaret's... Uh, Welcome to our, uh, our service of morning prayer. We got into a little bit of a rhythm this summer with morning prayer, and uh, again, uh, while I would greatly prefer things to be more normal than they are in this moment, uh, it is a joy to kind of rediscover this part of our, our Anglican heritage and our Anglican liturgy. And so uh, I, I trust, trust and I hope that this service of morning prayer has been a blessing to you and an opportunity to, to gather one in spirit as we seek to worship uh, the living God. In terms of announcements, uh, this week you're going to hear about more opportunities. Ad Advent is, is here. Uh, there, there will be another Advent retreat, just like last year, but different, and you're going to get some more details on that, and there's going to be opportunities uh, to get involved, especially uh, children and youth. I've reached out to some of you, uh, but I'll reach out to, to more of you in, in the weeks ahead. There's going to be lots of opportunities to, 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 to mark and, and observe this season of Advent and then into Christmas uh, with intentionality and with much hope and with much joy, even in the midst of so much that's, that's different. And so just stay tuned for that, and, and I do hope that the season of Advent proves to be a blessing uh, to you uh, over these next four weeks. That's all I have for you, so until then, I miss you, I love you, I wish you the very best, and we will gather in a week. Bye for now. <laughs>